This week, we're going to start a short series on pandas and how you can use it to make your data analysis easier. We're going to start out by talking about date times and the pandas data frame index. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, we're going to talk some about Pandas and some really handy functionality that it brings to the table. If you haven't used it a lot before, it's great for dealing with tabular data, and it sort of requires a change in how you think about solving programming problems. And you don't really want to write loops. It's sort of like doing uh, math in lists, and then you discover NumPy, where you vectorize your calculations. So it's sort of the same thing, but for uh, more versatile data parsing. So we're going to look at a Mesonet data file. We're going to read it in, do some basic data frame manipulation, work with the time delta and a time index, and then we'll actually understand a little bit more about what the index column is for. So to get started, we're going to import pandas as PD. And I'm going to go ahead and put our matplotlib magic in here to show plots because I want to show you a really handy way to make some quick dirty plots. I'm going to have a data URL and this is the URL to the Norman Mesonet time series for August 17th of this year. So you can see it's a pretty readable URL and I'm not even going to download that file. I'm going to let pandas do it for me. I'm going to call pandas read CSV. Here's where I could pass it the file name, or in this case, just the data URL that I've got. From past MetPy Mondays looking at these, we know we need to skip the first two rows and that we need to delimit on white space. So now, if I look at the head of my data frame, which remember df.head is just going to show us the first five rows. We see all of our data, and this is what we've been using for the past uh, few weeks when we've used Mesonet time data. But what's this column over here with all bold? So that's called an index. And the an index can be pretty much anything. In this case, since we didn't tell pandas what column to use as an index, it has made just an integer index column. So much like arrays or lists, where we start at zero and have the zeroth, the oneth, and so on items but we can set that to be anything we want as long as they're unique so each row can only be identified by one thing we could set that when we read the csv in but in this case what really makes sense is to have that index be something like the date and the time so a couple of basic pandas things first let's look at how we're going to get to a column and to a row and then we'll modify the index and see how that makes things easier or harder. So if I want to get to the air temperature column, I look at my data frame and much like a dictionary, I index into it with the square brackets and the name of my column. And there I have it. So it's a float column and this is our index. Notice the index travels along with it. It's sort of like an attached coordinate. You can also get to this by calling dot in the name of the column. I don't like this syntax as much personally because if you have a space in your name, if this, for example, T space air, this syntax obviously won't work, whereas this one would. And I like to have that consistency in my code. All right, so DF T air. So that's how we get to a column. What about a row? We could do this in a few ways. We obviously can't just say df zero, right? So if we do that, we get a key error because there's no column that has the integer zero as its name. So we can either look things up by their index by using df.loc or loc. In this case, if I call df.loc zero, I get the zeroth thing. 
if I call df.iloc, this looks it up by its integer row position. In this case, it's the exact same because our index is the integer row position. We just use the default. Okay, so let's make this a little more useful. If I wanted to find which data point, you know, what, what was the temperature at uh, 16 hours and 15 minutes, I would have to do some pretty complicated manipulation here. First of all, I just have the column time right here, which is minutes since the beginning of that day. I don't have an hour column. And I would have to do some kind of looping operation to find the right number of minutes since the beginning of the day. That doesn't sound very Pythonic. So we're going to overwrite the time column. So DF time, remember that's how we access a column. I'm going to create an instance of date time from pandas that is the day of the data file. And then I'm going to add to that a time delta, which in pandas is PD dot time delta index. I want to use the column DF time as my source. And the unit of that column is minutes. So that lowercase m indicates minutes. And we just want to take however many minutes, create a time delta, and add it to our start date time there. And then we're going to reassign it back to that column. So now, if we look at our data frame, we see that time, here are instances of a date time object. So now I can do interesting things to those. I can plot with them. I can do more math on them. I can say only get me the data between this hour and this hour, but I still don't have a great way to say, get me this time. Sure, I could use some Boolean indexing and say something like when the time column is equal to a certain value. So maybe I could say you know, df time is equal to pd.datetime2019 8, 17, 16 hours and 15 minutes. So that gives me a uh, Boolean series. Then I could use that to index into my data frame. Okay, so I finally found it, but that's pretty gross. That's a long line of code and it's doing a lot of comparisons that I don't need to do. So if you had a very large data frame, that could get kind of slow. Here's where the beauty of using the index column comes in. So now I'm going to call the function set index or the method set index on our data frame. I'm going to tell it to use the time column. And I'm going to say in place equals true, just so I don't have to say df equals. Now, if we look at our data frame again, we see that time is no longer just a column out here. Its label is a little bit further down, and those bold numbers that represent the index that started at 0, 1, 2, and so on, are now our date timestamps. So now that our data frame is indexed with date times, I can call df.loc. Remember, this looks up by an index value on PD date time of 2019. August 17th, 16 hours, 15 minutes. And there's my record. This is a great way to retrieve this data. But now you say, well, what if I want to get the 100th thing? So can I do df.loc 100? All right, this will give you the 101st thing, the 100th element. Well, that's not gonna work because we have date time as our index. If I use iloc, though, we will still get the 100th index row here. I really don't use iloc that much. If you choose your index wisely, you're probably not going to need it. And if you're using it to create a loop to run over your data frame, there are some better ways to do that sort of processing, which we'll discuss in some future videos. The last handy thing I'd like to show you here is there is a plot method attached to data frames. 
and it will return a matplotlib axes to you. I'm going to specify, so it doesn't plot every column, that I want the T air and relative humidity columns plotted. And since I didn't give it an X here, I'm just going to say use the index. So that will use our date time index and those two columns. And with very little code, we get a nice plot with a real date time axis on the X, a legend already made for us. And we can grab a handle to that axis reference if we want and continue modifying it. But this is an amazingly short amount of code to get that plot. And we have the power of using that date time indexing. So stay tuned for our future videos on pandas and how we can use it to make slicing and dicing your data a lot easier and a lot more fun. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.